Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about my most surprising reads from 2021. If you haven't seen already, I did my most, my most worstest, and my most disappointing books of 2021 already on my channel. So you can check out those videos linked somewhere around here. Today we're going to be talking about my most surprising, which I weirdly enough was the hardest list for me to create. When it came to most surprising, a lot of the books that I thought were really surprising or surprised me super well, I already wanted to talk about in my favorites video, which will be coming out next week. So I had to try to find books that wouldn't be on that video, that would be new to you all, that would be something fun for me to talk about. And I think besides one of them, maybe two, I managed to do it. Let's talk about the five most surprising books that I read this year. First up, we're gonna talk about The Girl from the Well, which was written by Rin Chupeko. I have DNF'd previous books by her in the past. I did didn't really enjoy them. What's the book by her? I'm trying to remember. Is it the Bone the Bone Witch? And then I also tried to read The Never Tilting World. I'm just not a huge fan, to be honest, but this one really shocked me. This is the story of a Japanese ghost girl who was killed a long time ago and now she is haunting people. And it's interesting because she's like kind of following along these one or two, I think it's one character, but there's another girl who kind of knows about what's happening. But she's haunting these men who have done horrible, horrible things to specifically women and children in their lives. And she is kind of more of a poltergeist where she can interact with them and hurt or kill them. And it's kind of the story of her trying to get vengeance on these men because it's reflecting the way that she was killed in a horrific way, but also her trying to work with this boy to get her, her like haunting, like to get her to move on to the afterlife, I guess is how you'd say it. I really enjoyed this one and I was shocked. There were some crazy horrific elements. There was some really, really dark parts. I think I was kind of shocked that for a YA book, it went as far as it did, but also like, like, it's totally appropriate for kids to read. I truly loved it and I highly recommend it and I will be reading the sequel which I think is kind of like a standalone sequel but around a similar topic. I'm not totally sure one day I'll be getting to it and the only reason why I actually picked it up is because it was free on Audible and I needed like a shorter book that month and so I picked it up and I read it and I really really enjoyed it. I think I rated it a four out of five stars. Next up is The Chalk Man which I knew I was going to enjoy this book but I did not know how much I was going to enjoy this book. I loved it. This is one of my favorite books that I read this year actually so get ready to see that again. Um, but I had to put it on this list because I was just genuinely surprised. So this is also horror like the one before and this is about a kid. It, it's in two POVs so it's about him growing up back in the 80s and then him as an adult in the same small town I believe like in the early 2000s thousands and so when he was a child some horrific accident happened or well, he witnessed it and so he was kind of living with that trauma and then him and his friends separate from that developed this game called Chalkman and they were playing it and eventually it led them to finding this body. Now in the present timeline he's starting to notice these Chalkman popping up again in his life and he's starting to notice that they're being connected to some crimes and he is really suspicious because he thinks that someone has stolen their game and is using it to kill people now and he is worried that he might be the only one who can solve it. One of the things that was really good about this book was well first off I just like horror told about or with main characters being children. Um, it's very similar to it without such um, extraneous details. It's very hard hitting, very much an adult book. There are lots of trigger warnings for this one going into it, including on page rape. So know that before you go into it. But it was so good. I was horrified through most of the story. I couldn't believe how gripping the tale was. I think I read it in like two days. It is pretty short but you have that kind of reflection like it does of like a children's timeline with a horrific element happening and then that horrific element affecting their adult timeline. Um, you have a gang of kids coming together to kind of solve this murder that happened and you also have like these weird paranormal elements where you're not sure if it's all in their head or not, which all of those put together are my favorite things in horror. So I cannot recommend this one enough. I did rate it five out of five stars and I freaking, ah, oh, it was so 
fantastic. I will be reading other books by CJ Tudor. Next up was one that I was so freaking shocked by. Like this is probably the biggest swerve on this list. I went into this book thinking like, okay, like whatever, I'm not really gonna be into it. And then I couldn't put it down for days. I think I read it in about 48 hours, to be honest, and it's a thick one. And that is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. So this is my first Karen Slaughter book that I've read. Since then I have read two other ones and this is still my favorite by her. This one has a very special place in my heart of being a book I will never stop thinking about. So in this story, we are following two sisters. The book starts out when they are younger and one of their sisters, there used to be three of them, is murdered when she is away at college. And then we see a jump forward and one of the sisters is really not doing well. She's just not well off and the other one is doing fantastic. And the one who is well off, her husband gets um, killed in the very first chapter and she has to watch him die. And it's kind of about that death bringing the two sisters together and for them realizing that uh, their lives weren't all as they thought they were and that a lot of their lives had been preordained by a side event and a character who seems to be controlling everything and they start to learn horrific things about their family and people in their lives and they start wondering who they can trust and what's going on and it was so dark so gripping i couldn't put the book down to this day i will think about paul and it's in a horrific way. This book has so many trigger warnings. I can't even begin to explain all of them, to be honest, but definitely, definitely um, rape, torture, on page, sexual assault, just lots and lots of dark elements, but it was so good. I really like the way that Karen Slaughter writes her characters. They're all very gray and you kind of don't necessarily agree with any of them, but also you don't necessarily disagree with any of them. A lot of her women are super strong in their own ways and they really carry the stories. She has a fantastic job of just writing these characters that like stick with you. And then of course her plots are super twisty, super turny. Right when you think you're like, oh yeah, I totally guessed that that was gonna happen. Yeah, it happens, but then something even crazier happens right afterwards that leaves you baffled. Her ending also 100% satisfied, which is something that I often don't feel in thrillers. So I was super excited to have one that didn't let me down. I will 100% be rereading this book at some point in my future. I buddy read it with a friend and both of us couldn't believe that we had waited so long in our lives to check it out and are so glad that we have read it. So I ended up rating this one a five star. If you watch the vlog, where I read it I said that I was gonna rate it a 4.75 but since then I have knocked it up and I mostly that came with the fact that I cannot stop thinking about the book. Next up I'm going to be talking about the book Never Saw Me Coming. So this one once again, like all the books on this list, was a huge shock to me. So Never Saw Me Coming is about a group of kids who have just started going to college and they are all psychopaths. And they are part of this program at the school where they get to go to this school for free in exchange for them being studied by the psychology department. Now they start to notice that different people in their group are being killed off and they believe that a murderer somewhere is targeting psychopaths at the school and killing them. And they're a little bit worried that they're going to be next. So three of them in particular team up together to try and stop or figure out the murders. And it's a really interesting idea because these three people are psychopaths. They quite literally only care about themselves. And even then that's in like a rough kind of estimate of the word. And they have to rely on each other and trust each other and try to figure out who's killing them while not really caring about anything. I loved this book. I think that the author handled the idea of psychopathy really, really well because we get to see it from a few different characters and we get to see a few different ideas. And even some of the POVs that we see for a little bit of a time are some of the people who are like studying them and stuff like that. Our main character, Chloe, is going to this school because she wants to hunt down this boy named Will and she wants to kill him. And that is said on the back blurb of the story. And so we do focus a lot on her drive and her want to kill this boy. And it does become important to the rest of of the story. It was so fantastic. Like the way it was written, these unemotional people, but also seeing how they do feel an emotional connection to certain things or certain events that are happening and how they think. It was just really enjoyable, especially if you're someone who enjoys psychology, which I do. I did take a few years of psychology um, 
back in the day before I knew that I wanted to be an artist and I thought that it was something I was going to want to do the rest of my life. So I'm always super interested in seeing how different people write about different uh, mental disorders and diagnoses and I think that this author did a really good job handling this one, especially with it being from the point of view of the people with the mental disorder instead of it being like written about them. I myself don't have psychopathy so I can't speak necessarily to say if it is like 100% accurate or if it's even like 100% great of how she's representing these people but I thought that she did a really good job from everything that I have learned and been educated on myself. But finally we're going to be talking about one that is definitely going to be um, an unpopular opinion but you know what that's okay because I had a really good time and I want to talk about this book even more on my channel. So we are going to talk about the death of Jane Lawrence. I... Let's just say it. I've said it for all the other ones. This one surprised me so much. So this is a gothic retelling of the story Rebecca or Jane Eyre. I'm honestly on the fence about which one I think she was really retelling because there are elements from both of them. But we are following this woman who gets into a marriage of convenience so that she can become an accountant for this doctor. She, she marries the doctor and he tells her that, you know, he's willing to help her out and everything. They seem to be like becoming good friends. But he says that the one part of their marriage that needs to be set in stone is that she is never allowed to go to his like country house but he is going to spend the night there every single night and she's going to stay in town on the night of their honeymoon unfortunately there is an accident there's an incident where she ends up having to go to the manor house and has to spend the night there with him and honestly the story doesn't really pick up there but that's where the summary leaves off um the story continues on into this element where she meets a lot of his friends she finds out about a lot of hauntings she learns about magic and she starts to develop magic in herself and then some things kind of go wrong and awry and it's interesting to see like what people have to say about that part of the book because the first part of the book I feel like most people can genuinely agree like it was good it was gothic but it wasn't too slow it focused on some creepy eerie elements it had some unsettling bits to it but overall it was really enjoyable and then when the magic gets introduced a lot of people lost interest in the book which I definitely agree that once the magic became part of the story it was a little bit weird and confusing and kind of boring for a bit but I got re-hooked after Jane our main character had to start doing magic herself and I think a lot of people didn't have that connection with that bit. I really loved it there's this whole entire ritual that she has to go through where she's basically sleep deprived no food kind of a thing so you're kind of wondering if the story is actually happening or if it's her kind of going insane because it's like seven days that she has to go without sleep I think it is and so you're watching her descent into madness and you're not sure is this weirdness her descent into madness and there's just kind of some crazy weirdness about it. I don't think I would really recommend this one to many people but I enjoyed it so much that if you enjoy a lot of similar books to me I'd say check it out, try it out, give it a shot because it wasn't a horrible book even with the kind of disappointment in the magic system. I like what the author did with the ending. I like books that kind of undo themselves and then redo themselves and kind of change the perspective of the entire story because of some big twist. I really enjoyed the kind of bits at the beginning where it felt like I was just getting some tea from some early 1900s women. I really enjoyed the gothic element in this story which to be fair I don't like gothic stories so I think that if you're going into this one expecting it to be extremely gothic in setting and in storytelling elements you're gonna be let down a little bit but if you're expecting it to be like light gothic you might not be let down so much. And then of course you need to have like a loose interpretation of what magic is and I think it'd be really best for if you're the kind of person who likes loose rules with magic. My favorite books of all time is The Starless Sea and it has really really loose magic rules too and so I think that that was partially why I was okay with the magic whereas a lot of people aren't because I don't need those like stern definitions of what you can and cannot do. Those are the five most surprising books that I read this year. I am now realizing at the end of this list that I didn't list a single fantasy. I was not surprised by fantasy apparently this year. Don't worry if you follow my channel because you mostly love fantasy and you're wondering why I'm not talking about it a lot in these videos. I'll be talking about it a ton in my favorites video. So get psyched about that for next week. I appreciate each and every one of you. Let me know down below some of your surprising reads this year. I don't remember how my outro goes but until next time I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye!